Hi folks, I'm Sherry Martin. Welcome to Heart of the Home at Harris Acres. My goodness, what a wonderful fall we've had. Winter's upon us, the holiday seasons, a time to celebrate. And today, my guest, Judge Harry Doss, and I are gonna talk about celebrating many things. We're gonna celebrate the fact I have six children. You have six children, don't you? That's correct. Thank you for coming to see me. I know you're really busy. Oh, it's my privilege. You're, Thank you for You're very busy. Me. Now, you sit on the bench, Fannin, Gilmer, Pickens County. That's correct, our Appalachian Judicial Circuit. Right, and you're an excellent judge, I understand. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you so much, we hope. You, you make an effort to do a lot of things that, that are above and beyond the call of duty. You, you show up at places that you don't have to be. And, and that's a great, it's an honor to have you at ball games and at meetings and, and at fundraisers. You're very active in that. And thank you so much for doing that. Well, thank you. It's my, my now, privilege. Now, talking about our children, one of the things that I learned raising six children, I have one now who is a go-kart racer. And Nick won his first race this week with his new champ buggy. And thank goodness PNR photos were there to photograph this because he says, Mom, you're a lousy photographer. <laughs> so PNR was there, and I hope Nick will be in the magazine. But, but I have learned it's very important to keep your children busy, isn't it? Oh, certainly. There, there's so much. The devil is looking for idle time. And um, during raising our children, I lost a child to 17 years of drug addiction. And one of your fellow judges, Judge Brenda Weaver, actually stepped in and saved my child's life. And she gave me my child back a year ago. She, this week, will celebrate being drug-free for one year. Been awesome. Uh, we want to welcome Dawn, my daughter, who is Cherokee Dawn Fountain. She is 33 years old and has been clean one year now, haven't you? All right. What an awesome day. What an awesome day. Well, it's certainly uh, a great thing to celebrate. It is a thing to celebrate. And it's the kind of thing, many days, before I met you, I planned her funeral a lot of times because I kind of gave up. And about three years ago, I looked around and I said, God, I can't do this. I just can't handle losing my child. So I turned her over to God. And I made up my mind then, whatever happened was between she and God. I couldn't intervene, I couldn't get her any more treatment, I couldn't give her help, I couldn't force help on her, but Judge Brenda Weaver gave her a choice, and the choice was straighten up or die, and she is, <clears throat> I'm so pleased, she has been clean almost a year, and um, during her drug addiction, she did, she has some medical issues that she'll have the rest of her life. And, and that's a whole other story because that's another battle. But, but every day we say God is in charge and we know whatever happens will happen. And we're so blessed that you and, and the other judges have done drug court now for what, four years? At, at least four years and primarily uh, Judge Weaver. It's just been great. She's, she's wonderful. And, and you can see in her face the caring and the compassion. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And I, I know the graduation last time, um, you know, when, when you see a judge brought to tears, you know there's a success story and a lot of success stories. And, and you know, one of the things Dawn and I have done to talk about her success, we've been going to schools and visiting with children. And we have some letters that we want to share with folks today because when we showed up, we started in the fourth grade talking to kids about drugs. And the first day we did it, we went to a science class. And I walked in, you know, we did the Habitat for Humanity cookbook as a fundraiser. And I walked in with the cookbook and I said, guys, how many of you know what I do that I love? And about two thirds of the class raised their hand and they said, you cook on television. I said, you're right, I do. But I said, today I'm gonna share a recipe with you that I hope you never make. And I said, um, Dawn, hand me the ingredients. And she handed me Drano. And what else was in the bag? Super glue. Super glue. Um, I can't remember the other ingredients. But, but as we took it out of the bag, do you know three-fourths of the class knew that we were going to make meth? We didn't make meth, but that was the ingredients for meth. And I thought, you have got to be kidding me. These fourth graders know what it takes to make meth. So we talked to them. We explained that at one time, Dawn was 5'11 and weighed 98 pounds. Now, 98 pounds is <laughs> not much on a 5'11 frame. And when she came back to me in that condition, she looked literally like dead man walking. It was horrible. It was horrible. And at that point, I gave up on her. And I said, God, it's between you and Dom. There's nothing else I can do. 
I can't pray enough. I can't cry enough. I can't scream enough. Um, I can't pay any more people to talk to her. There's nothing else I can do. It was between her and God. And God stepped in, didn't he? Yes, he did. He did. And, and, and through a little tiny judge named Brenda Weaver. You know, it was within a week after I gave up, Judge Weaver walked into your life. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in the courtroom, and I remember thinking, if she goes to prison, maybe she'll straighten up there. But she didn't have to go to prison, and she didn't have to leave her children because of the new drug court. And the drug court made such a difference. You know, they, they drug test them twice a week, but they're at home with their families. And that's such an awesome thing. And, and hopefully most of them are, are at their jobs. That's working right. And able to support their families. That's right. And you know, one of the things we did when we talked to the classes, um, her son David was in school. He was in one of the classes we talked to and there was a whole auditorium of children there. And we talked and we, you know, gave our presentation and Dawn read a poem to the kids. And, and then we said, you know, there's a true success story here. This really is a recipe for success. Don's son, David, is in the audience today, and he was so proud of his mom. He, he was so proud up. of his mom. He stood up, he stood up. and the mm -hmm. kids applauded him, and it was awesome. It was his first Christmas with his mother sober, his first Christmas, and he was 12 years old. So it was an awesome feeling. It was an awesome feeling. And this year, her daughter Ansley is on the honor roll, isn't she? Uh -huh. Yeah. They're so these great. kids, um, the judicial system of Pickens County, gave these children their mother back, and through the grace of God, you know, through Judge Weaver, through y'all working together in the community to make a drastic difference. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, and we appreciate your thoughts there. But uh, Judge Weaver and many others are working very hard right. in the drug uh, court program. It's, um, it's a program where it's, it's an alternative. gives people a chance, rather than going to prison, which doesn't have much a, a very high rate of success. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives people another chance, another opportunity to reclaim their lives. Right. And, and I, most of the folks that I have observed, most of the folks that I've observed through Judge Weaver's court also uh, credit Judge Weaver's drug court and also uh, faith. Right. And, pe and people Absolutely. of faith right. helping them through this terrible crisis. Right. So, right. right. But the, uh, now we, we're going to take a break and we come back if if we can do this Don's going to read a poem that we read to the children and I don't know if you've ever heard it have you heard my name is Crystal Meth n no I don't believe it's I an have. awesome poem guys stay tuned we'll be back we don't want you to leave today truly is going to be a recipe for success hang around we'll be right back now hi folks welcome back to heart of the home Thank you for staying tuned today. Today is a very special day. We are celebrating a wonderful one year anniversary. My child, like so many other children and so many families have been affected by drugs. And we have a success story and it truly is a recipe for success that starts with education. Dawn and I now go to visit schools and talk to children. And one of the things that we have learned, we get letters from children. And the letters are precious because they are so grateful to us. We, you lay it out on the line, don't you? And, and Judge Harry, we know that education is the most important part of drug, stopping the drugs. One time, only one time, and you are hooked. So tell me what we can do. Well, I think uh, education, as I was mentioning earlier when we were talking, Sherry, education is a key mm -hmm. to fighting this terrible scourge, this plague that is infecting our, our great nation, mm -hmm. the, this methamphetamine. But we need to educate people, and particularly young people, maybe at the, at, like you're doing at the grammar school level, to the dangers mm -hmm. of this methamphetamine. Mm -hmm. I mean, with like Dawn going in and talking mm -hmm. to children, they need to know firsthand mm -hmm. the problems that come about. It, that this thing, methamphetamines, is destroying families. Right. It is uh, destroying children's lives. Because so many with defects is having to take so many children right. from homes mm -hmm. as a result of methamphetamines. And it's not bad folks, it's just people who've made terrible decisions. Right. But once you get hooked on this methamphetamine, nothing matters. Your mm -hmm. children don't matter, your job doesn't matter. And I have to say in court almost every day, thank God for grandparents because right. grandparents are having to step in and take over with the children. 
just the average child needs to know the problem of methamphetamines. Right. And I really applaud you and Dawn for going into the grammar schools, the elementary schools, and, and trying to educate children. Uh, we need to do more of that, in my opinion. Well, we were so blessed because after each time we talked to groups of children, a group would, would single us out and talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, and one young man stepped up and wanted to know how to get in touch with Judge Weaver. And I said, son, why do you need to know? And he said, because my dad is a drug dealer and I need to turn him in. You think that didn't break my heart? Eighth grader. Eighth grader. And, and the, mm. the counselor was there, and she said, that answers so many questions about this young man. We knew something was wrong, but we didn't know what it was. So if we change one child's life by walking into schools and admitting that our family is also part of the problem, I have a child who's a drug addict, and she will be until the day she dies. Many Christmases, I didn't get to spend time with her. Many weeks, I didn't see her. Many months, I didn't talk to her. And to be quite honest with you, I gave up on her a couple of times. And Archie Watkins took me aside one day, and he said, you can never do that because without her, you have, she has nothing. If you are not there for her, she has nobody, and you can't do that. And I said, yes, I can, I'm just through. He said, you can't do that. And he was so right, he was so right. Because if I had given up, you've buried six friends? Three this year, actually, the numbers are going up. Right, so a total of nine friends. Her roommate actually died from drugs. I thought it was my child did. I called the funeral home and said, when you pick her up, go ahead and do what you need to do and then call me. He said, what? And I said, I have a scanner and I heard the address you're going to. I know it's my child. He said, no, no, no. This is a 44 year old female. It was her roommate. It was her roommate. You know, we have come so close to losing her, but by the grace of God, she's here. She's here. Now Donna's gonna read a poem. You've never heard it. I've heard it several times. And it hits me in the gut every time I hear it. This was written by a young Indian girl in prison. She, she was, was 19 prison. years old. Yeah. Would you please read that and share it with everybody? Yes. Okay, the name of it is My Name is Meth. I destroy homes, I tear families apart, take children, and that's just the start. I'm, most com I'm more costly than diamonds, more precious than gold. The sorrow I bring is a sight to behold. If you need me, remember I'm easily found. I live around you in schools and in town. I live with the rich, I live with the poor, I live down the street and maybe next door. I'm made in a lab, but not like you think. I can be made under the kitchen sink. In your child's closet or even in the woods, if this scares you to death, well, it certainly should. I have many names, but there's one you would know best. I'm sure you've heard of me. My name is Crystal Meth. My power is awesome, try me, you'll see. But if you do it, you may never break free. Just try me once and I might let you go, but try me twice and I'll own your soul. When I possess you, you'll steal and you'll lie. You'll do what you have to just to get high. The crimes you'll commit for, your narco for my narcotic charms will be worth the pleasure you feel in your arms. You'll lie to your mother, you'll steal from your dad. When you see their tears, you won't even be sad. But you'll forget your morals and how you were raised. I'll be your conscience. I'll teach you my ways. I'll take kids from parents and parents from kids. I'll turn people from God and separate friends. I'll take everything from you, your looks and your pride. I'll be with you always right by your side. You'll give up everything, your family, your home, your friends, your money, then you'll be alone. I'll take and I'll take till I, you have nothing more to give. When I'm finished with you, you'll be lucky to live. If you've tried me, be warned, this is no game. If given the chance, I'll drive you insane. I'll ravish your body, I'll control your mind. I'll own you completely, your soul will be mine. The nightmares I'll give you while lying in bed, the voices you hear from inside of your head, the sweats, the shakes, the visions you'll see, I want you to know these are all gifts from me. But then it's too late, and you'll know in your heart that you are mine, and we shall not part. You'll regret that you tried me, they always do, but it was you that came to me, not I to you. You knew this would happen many times you were told, but you challenged my power and chose to be bold. You could have said no and just walked away. If you could live that day over, now what would you say? I'll be your master, you'll be my slave. I'll even go with you when you go to your grave. Now that you have met me, what will you do? Will you try me or not? It's all up to you. 
I can bring you more misery than words can tell. Come take my hand. Let me lead you to H. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I've heard it a million times, and um, it rings in my mind. Folks, don't forget this poem. Don't forget this poem. We'll be back in just a minute, and we're going to be joined by a wonderful man, John Ferguson, and he has a story and he has a song, and I want you to hang around. We'll be right back now. Hi, folks. Welcome back to Heart of the Home. An awesome day, an awesome day to celebrate. And joining the celebration is a great man, a great singer, and a great friend, John Ferguson. John, you're from Lawrenceville, is that right? Well, yes, ma'am. Right. And you drove up today, and you just got lost a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, my direction's not good. I, I don't know. I wouldn't say that. Uh, maybe I heard them wrong. I'm not well, say. you accidentally were here because last night I was sitting at home watching a DVD from many years ago, and somebody sang the song that you sing in church many days, um, The Old Rugged Cross Made a Difference. That's right. And when I heard that song, I immediately called you on the cell phone, and I said, tomorrow's the day for a celebration. Would you help me? And you did, and thank you so much for that. Um, you and Dawn met at church, right. and during this time, your wife was going through breast cancer That's right. and is a survivor and doing wonderful, isn't she? Yes, ma'am. And, and you, every time you stepped up to sing in church, did we cry? Yes. Did we cry? Did he bring a message, such an awesome message? And, and I said, um, the first time Nicholas went to Crossroads to church, he went with Matt, and I went down later to pick him up, and he walked out of the church, and he said, well, you just need to come here and hear this choir. He said, you just wouldn't believe it. He said, this is the best choir I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and I said, you know, I think he's right. <laughs> it was awesome. And uh, I know I've been there so many times when you would step up and sing, I'm Amazed. Now, tell me the story about the song, I'm Amazed. Well, what happened with that was the my wife had went and had a uh, mastectomy done. Mm-hmm and they found out that there was still cancer inside. Mm -hmm. And then they went and they cut a little bit more off towards the side and uh, it was just tissue. And they did a biopsy and there was still cancer there. And so they did a third time and I mean, it was all the way down to the muscle. I, I wow. watched them do it. And she's and how old? She's only 30, uh, 34. And so she's 33 at the time. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it was just, uh, you know, it was just, it's a hard thing to watch, but we learned that song. And I was supposed to be singing the lead on it, and the Lord got a hold of me. We were going to find out on Monday if it was positive or negative for any more cancer mm -hmm. from what they had taken from the biopsy. Mm -hmm. And there's a part on the second verse uh, that says that uh, I'm not afraid to face tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Uh, talking about that you have every, you'll, you're holding in other words God has it all in his control absolutely, absolutely. and it's okay with with whatever he wants to have done it's right. going to be done and I remember my wife and I both uh, it, it got to us and, and we said you know what it, it really doesn't matter uh, what we want it's what God wants mm -hmm. and we're just going to trust him mm -hmm. and that uh, Monday morning we walked in and, and she looked at the the doctor looked at the results, and uh, she looked at it, and she said, uh, she's clear. Wow. And uh, But there wasn't a dry in church that day. I'll tell you that. There was not a, and, and you, oh, it was an awesome day. It was an awesome day. You, through the message, and through your wife, and through your faith, brought, the whole church was rocking. I mean, it was absolutely the best feeling I've ever seen in a building. And it was all the support for you and all the love for you and all the faith. And that was, you know, everybody knew that test was going to be okay. That's right. And it was. That's right. And it was. And, and your wife happens to be one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. And, and she just sparkles, you know, she just sparkles. And she sparkles from within. Thank so, um, but, but every time I played this CD to the point I've just about worn it out. But I'm amazed is the kind of thing I can listen to all day long because there are so many things in life that do amaze you. Now, this song was written by somebody in, is it New York? Yes, the, uh, the actually the uh, Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir mm -hmm. uh, is led by the pastor's wife. I think her name is Simbola. I don't know her last name, mm -hmm. but it's she's the one that actually wrote it. Mm -hmm. But she wrote it from stories of people that were on the street. Mm -hmm. 
and that had problems with uh, uh, drug addictions and had came off the streets. Mm -hmm. And when they realized that poem was so true that it had such a grip on you, mm -hmm. and when they realized that there was somebody that loves me, mm -hmm. Uh, it just, they, they didn't know how to express themselves, mm -hmm. except I'm right. amazed. That's I'm amazed. why it touched me so much in church. Right. And, you, and you know, that's one of the things during your drug addiction, you don't forget Bible verses. Now she, her brain has been affected by the drugs, but she can tell you Bible verse from fifth grade from Cool Springs Baptist Church. Right. And, and, and it's funny how things go in your mind and, and the words of this song are one of those things. You never forget it. And and right. I can remember the first time I heard you sing it, and I can remember the 10,000 other times I heard you <laughs> sing it. <laughs> and I have enjoyed every time because there is such an awesome message there. And the message is don't give up. That's right. Turn your eyes to God and turn your heart, and there you go. And, and you know, um, little old Archie Watkins got kind of ill with me because I was just at the point I was going to give up again. And he said, oh, no, you're not. He said, you're going to be there. And he's right. You know, you yes. have to be. You have to be, and you can't give up, and you have to just be positive. And, and one of the things I've always done, my favorite song is Old Rugged Cross. Amen. And that's the song that always kills me because it really is. The Old Rugged Cross made a difference. It is. The Old Rugged Cross made a difference. And, and the people in your lives who stepped in made a difference but God put them in your life. That's you know, right. they didn't just appear. Right. God put them in your life. And, and, and I, I can remember standing in court that day thinking, my child is gone. But you were gone to a better place, and it's a better life, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. A much it better is. life. Amen. Now, John, we're going to close today's program with something that we don't ever do. We always end with a DVD. But today we're going to close with some footage of scenery we took in Alaska because I'm certain God made Alaska for me. <laughs> so, and, and we have some great footage. And in that, we're going to play I'm Amazed. And we're going to let you sing for us. But you know the way I love that song? This show may end with two or three songs of you singing amazed, I'm Amazed over and over. It is such an awesome message. And yes. thank you so much for doing it. And thank you so much for sharing it with people. And for sharing your story about your family. Because your family was wrapped in the arms of the church and in the arms of God. That's and right. it made a difference. It Amen. made a difference. So now guys, today is a day we haven't cooked, but we have had a recipe for success. And you know, about three months ago, we shot a story, Recipe for Success, and it got lost at the studio. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a reason it got lost, because that success story was a, uh, it was a business venture. And it was our executive producer going to Anchorage, Alaska to work. Maybe that wasn't what our story of success was about. Maybe it was about success when you're beating the devil. And, and you have truly beat the devil, haven't you? Yes. And, and with God's help. With that's God's right. help. Amen. And that's the whole thing, guys. Remember, turn to God. Turn to your friends and your family. And you can always succeed. Now, today, we're going to succeed in a great celebration. Dawn is clean. One year. It's been an awesome year. Um, we have met some great friends and family, including John this year. So you're part of the celebration. You're such an awesome young man. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. And we're going to close today with John singing, I'm amazed. Hang around, guys. You are going to love this just as much as I do. See you again next week. Bye-bye. tried so hard to hide Though I laughed and said my life was fine without you I was covering up the secret tears I cried and Then one day someone told me of your mercy and the love you showed on a hill called Calvary There you died And purchased my redemption When you broke sin's power And set my spirit free I'm amazed That you love me I'm amazed
Yes, it's true. There have been days when I failed you. Lord, you know the many times I've gone astray. 